In this video, we are going to show how the Synopsys Virtualizer Development Kits for ARM and Designware can be used for an early and efficient bring up of a driver for the Designware Multimedia Storage Host Controller IP. The Virtualizer Development Kit, or VDK, is a virtual prototype based software development environment. A large variety of IP from ARM and Synopsys is available and allows you to quickly create a customized software development environment that fits your needs. Along with that, the VDK also comes with reference embedded software such as Android, Linux and UEFI that serves as a good starting point for software development. For using a VDK, the software developer does not need to change habits. He can use the exact same debuggers, IDEs and connect to the VDK as he would use with real hardware. At the same time, the VDK also connects to the real environment such as the Ethernet, terminal applications as well as USB or the SD card. In addition to that, the VDK provides enhanced visibility into all aspects of the underlying hardware platform through a scripting API as well as through tools that allow system-wide tracing and debugging. Even interrupt lines or peripheral states can be traced and debugged. In the next part of the video, we are going to show how the VDK can be configured to serve as a bring-up target for driver development for the Designware MMC host controller. As the first step, the user can select among a set of virtual motherboards such as the UATX motherboard compliant with the ARM Versatile Express prototyping system. As the next step, the user can select the CPU from a library that is containing the entire spectrum of ARM Cortex-A processors. Further on, the CPU can be configured such as the number of cores can be set. Now we are going to add another building block to the VDK, a virtual daughter board which is hosting the design web mobile storage interface IP. As you can see from the configuration dialog, a wide range of different designware interface IP focused virtual daughter boards is available to the user. Since we are going to care about driver development, we are configuring the virtual daughter board with full support for tracing and debugging. This enables us later to get some additional insight into the operation of the designware interface IP, far beyond what would be possible to see with hardware. After those few configuration steps, the VDK is ready to be built and to be used as a software development target for our driver for the Designware MMC Interface IP peripheral. Before we go ahead, let's do just a quick look under the hood of the VDK. So what you can see here in the background is the schematic of the virtual UATX motherboard as well as the different daughter boards. So the schematic editor here allows us to dive into the details of the daughter boards, such as, for instance, the design by MMC daughter board, where we can figure out the MMC host controller. As you can see, the virtual daughter board is also hosting a whole set of other peripherals, such as the sockets or the SD cards. But now let's have a look at how to use the VDK for driver development. So this is how the VDK looks like. First of all, a virtual UART console and a virtual VGA console, such as you would use even with hardware, as well as the GUI, which allows you to insert virtual MMC cards and a GUI for the control of the VDK. This tool also allows you to inspect the underlying hardware, such as providing you with deep visibility into the MMC registers and signals, and that even during the software execution. We are now going to kick off this simulation, similar as powering on a hardware board. What you will see in the UART console is the boot process as indicated by the Linux kernel debug messages. Also, the VGA console is going to be configured by the kernel. The log clearly indicates that the MMC host controller has been detected, but now it seemed to hang when setting the MMC bus suite. After a little while, the kernel reports a timeout. Now it's up to us to figure out why. The root cause analysis can be efficiently done using the VDK. With just one click, you can attach a software debugger in order to debug the MMC driver. Debugging is non-intrusive and not visible to the embedded software. The entire system is suspended. During debugging, no hardware exceptions will occur which could disturb the debugging session, such as watchdog timers or other hardware events. 
But with VDKs, there's something better than step-by-step -step debugging. A VDK allows you to do full system tracing of all hardware and software events, such as OS processes, software functions, instructions, along with even Linux debug messages, and all that correlated with the debug logs, for instance, from the Designware MMC model, along with the registers, interrupt signals, external connections, and so on. So let's see how that can help to solve our problem. We will go and run for a little while and collect some data that we just configured to be traced. What we can again see in the UART terminal console is that the MMC driver is retrying to set the bus speed. The retry has failed again, but now we can have a look at the traces. We're going to open the analysis viewer that is exposing all the hardware and software traces, as well as logs from the models that have been recorded. First of all, we are looking at the Linux debug messages. That allows us to easily position the time cursor to the location where the problem has occurred. Now we will interleave the Linux kernel messages with further data, such as the debug messages that are coming from the Designware MMC model. What we can now see is that while the kernel is exposing the timeout message, the model clearly tells us that the power is not turned on. This capability is pretty unique to virtual prototypes, because the underlying simulation models of, for instance, the peripherals, are able to expose information that hardware would be not able to provide at all. As the next step in our debug flow, we are going to correlate this information now with the software execution, such as the function or OS trace. We have narrowed down the problem to the actual function and can go fix the code. Remember, the Designware MMC model has told us that the card power has not been turned on while sending a message to the card. We are now adding the configuration to turn on the card power for all the sockets in the Linux driver. After rebuilding the kernel, we are simply able to load the new kernel image into the VDK. There is no need for a lengthy flashing process as you know from hardware boards. So let's have a look how far we can get with our modified kernel. We are going to restart the scenario. As you can see, the Linux kernel is starting to boot, and it looks much better now, because suddenly the bus speed could be set correctly. The Linux boot proceeds until we are able to log in on the root console. So now we are trying to insert a card into the MMC card slot using the GUI. And unfortunately, yet another error is reported by the Linux kernel while trying to insert a card. We will follow the same debug procedure as before and first have a look at the MMC model trace. The log tells us about a model starvation. But why? Let's scroll up a little bit. The model also reports a data starvation. It seems that the file was not read out by the driver. Now we need to find out why. Therefore, we are going to again correlate the logs from the Designware MMC model with other traces such as function traces and register traces. What we can see now, by zooming more closely into the function of the driver that is supposed to pull data from the FIFO, is that this function is actually not talking to the Designware MMC peripheral registers. Thus, it may well be that the driver's function is using the wrong address to access the FIFO. So we are trying to fix the problem again in our driver. By comparing the driver's header file, which keeps the addresses of the MMC registers, with the specification, we can find out that indeed the wrong address has been used to access the FIFO register. We are going to correct that in our driver, and subsequently we will rebuild our kernel and again load it into the VDK. Okay, let's give it another try. Again, you can see the Linux boot process in the UART console. The VGA console pops up. We are going to log in as root.
Now we're inserting the card again. This time it looks really good. So what we're now trying to do is we are trying to mount an SD card, which we just inserted into our card slot. We're creating the device driver node in the device file system. We're then creating a mount point. And now we are going to execute the mount command. And afterwards, we should be able to read out the directory content of our SD card. And our ls command should expose the content of the SD card. And it's working now. This demo has been about showing the usefulness of a virtualizer development kit, specifically in context of embedded software development, such as driver development, by illustrating the unique debug capabilities enabled by virtual prototype models. Thank you very much.